Week 3, Lesson 3. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! In Action Comics number 1, the world was introduced to Superman. But what made this character so appealing that over 75 years later, he's still a significant part of the pop culture landscape? Early Superman was a very simple character. He saw the world in black and white. There were no shades of gray. If something was wrong, he would do everything in his power to fix it. In many of his early issues, he would tackle social problems. In Action Comics number 3, Superman finds out that a subpar equipment from a mine owner has caused a cave-in. This causes Superman to go undercover as a miner to look at the poor conditions. Then he goes to the mine owner and tricks that mine owner and his friends into going into the mine, where he traps them, until the mine owner agrees to improve working conditions. In Action Comics number 4, Superman stops a crooked coach from using thugs in a football game. In Action Comics number 7, he stops the circus from going bankrupt. In Action Comics number 8, he tackles juvenile delinquency. In Action Comics number 10, Superman tackles the maltreatment of prisoners. Action Comics number 12 is my favorite. Superman takes on traffic violations. After someone gets hit by a drunk driver, Superman pretends to be killed by a drunk driver and then follows that driver everywhere, haunting him. Once the drunk has learned his lesson about drinking while driving, Superman finds out who's making the worst cars in the city, then goes to that factory and destroys it. He then kidnaps the mayor, drives the car really fast, telling the mayor that his lack of enforcing speed laws is costing people their lives. The mayor changes his ways and starts enforcing traffic laws. Despite the fact that the majority of Superman's actions were illegal in this issue, his heart was still in the right place and he's portrayed as a good guy, because everything worked out in the end. Now, you may have noticed that Superman's not up against the toughest foes. No one in this series provided a serious challenge to him for the first year of his appearances. This book was like comfort food. There was an unstoppable hero trying to help out the innocent, and that hero always won the day without any real trouble. In Action Comics number 14, Superman's first reoccurring villain was introduced. A bald man, a scientist named the Ultra Humanite, actually managed to trap Superman for a full six panels before Superman escaped by simply flexing his muscles. However, Superman was not able to capture the Ultra Humanite, and he got away. Issue number 17, the Ultra Humanite returns as a surprise villain who is leading a gang. When Superman goes to arrest him, he finds out that he was facing a projection of the Ultra Humanite the entire time. It's brains versus brawn, and it's an even match. Action Comics number 19. Ultra Humanite, just called Ultra in this book, tries to unleash a plague on the city. When Superman bursts into his lair, Ultra uses a special gun he made to take Superman down. After Ultra pulls the trigger, Superman uses his speed to pull Ultra out from behind the gun into his own line of fire, effectively killing the man could make a good argument that pulling someone into the path of an incoming bullet is murder. Superman shows no remorse about this. In January 1940, Action Comics number 20, Clark Kent takes a trip to Hollywood, where he stops someone from assassinating a movie star, Dolores Winters. She thanks Kent and promises him an exclusive interview later, but when Clark Kent comes to collect, she has no clue who he is and acts very dismissive of him. Well, thanks to the magic of comic book coincidences, it turns out that the aging bald man, Ultra Humanite, had his brain saved and got his goons to place it in the body of Miss Winters, so that he could continue planning his criminal acts as an actress. Superman stops her and the comic book readers were introduced to what could potentially be the first transsexual character of the 20th century. Well, it turned out that Ultra's change was too controversial for the average reader. In February 1940, in issue number 21 of Action Comics, Ultra made her last return before being ignored for decades. A scientist was harnessing atomic power, but the side effects were creating explosions. So, Ultra, in the body of Miss Winters, tries to steal the research. 
Superman stops her, but the scientists manage to split the atom, and a big climax takes place in a volcano, which, of course, is erupting. Ultra gets away, and Superman tells the scientists to forget everything he's learned about splitting the atom. The absence of Ultra Humanite led to a new mad scientist being created, Lex Luthor, whose first appearance had him selling weapons overseas to some warring nations. Superman stops him, but Lex becomes obsessed with Superman, challenging him while simultaneously committing crimes. It's brains versus bronze, but like before, Superman is easily able to save the day in the end. One day, one of the artists forgot to draw Luther with hair. Jerry Siegel, still upset over being unable to use Ultra Humanite, told the artist to keep it that way. It was only in Action Comics number 47 when Lex Luthor would change the dynamics in Superman's comics and superhero comics forever, when he temporarily gained superpowers, making him a Superman. This was a Superman versus Superman battle that the readers, mostly kids at this point, couldn't get enough of, and changed the way comic fights were made. This opened up huge possibilities. Before, Superman would fight man-made monsters and high-tech gadgets in the realm of, at least at that time, plausible science fiction. Lex Luthor just got a magic ring that evened the odds against Superman. Before this, it was Superman, a fantastical creation, mostly facing real-world problems. Now, we had Superman facing another fantastical creation. The character of Superman soon escaped the limits of his comic book. Superman would go on to be the star of a radio show. The radio show added some things to the mythology. It added the character Jimmy Olsen, it added Kryptonite, Superman's biggest weakness, and it helped expose some of the practices made by the Ku Klux Klan. Superman was also turned into a series of animated shorts to be shown in theaters. These rotoscope cartoons were made by Fleischer Brothers Studios, and even earned Superman an Oscar nomination. The first short, just called Superman, had him face off against yet another baldy mad scientist. This short is the first time we ever see Superman fly, in any medium, and not just leap. The short is considered one of the most influential pieces of animation ever made. As America entered World War II, Superman shorts became propaganda, with Superman defeating the Japanese and the Germans over and over again. After the war, Superman would star in some movie serials designed to entertain children on Saturday mornings. He then got his own television show, which became one of the biggest hits in early television. George Reeves, the actor who played Superman, played Superman on a crossover episode of an even bigger hit television show called I Love Lucy. So far, the character has starred in seven movies and six television shows, as well as plenty of awful video games. The massive success of Superman is from his ability to translate outside of comics, and to relate to audiences in all types of mediums. To this date, Superman is one of the most merchandised characters ever created, and is one of the most recognizable characters in the entire world. But importantly for this class, the early success of Superman led to a creation of the superhero genre, which would forever become associated with comics. Shortly after the creation of Superman, the market became flooded with costume crime fighters.